over here. <laughs> this is another relationship question for Eddie. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but there's an entire forum devoted to Adama and Rosalind on the Sci-Fi Channel. And uh, there's a whole bunch of us really annoyed by the fact that uh, Adama still wears his wedding ring. And we'd like to know if there's a backstory for that, and also whether or not he's going to take it off before the series ends. <laughs> It was something that uh, I did on my own on that case. I don't think the writers ever really picked up on it till maybe the second or third season that I actually had a wedding ring on. Um, I did it for a reason in my own backstory. Um, it, it's, uh, Adama was married before the show starts. Uh, there was a divorce. Uh, he really didn't want the divorce. And it happened and so forth. So as far as he was concerned, he was still married and uh, he never gave that up. And uh, so he just wore it, and no one ever said anything about it. And this is the first time I've even been asked a question about the ring. And, uh, but it turned out to be quite an interesting choice because I could feel every day that I wore that ring a little more understanding of what it meant. And then every day I got closer to, as the years went on, that I got closer to, um, uh, to Laura, the ring became even more relevant to me, and it became heavier. And that whole, and then it got to be real heavy, and you'll see why. <laughs> and uh, it's, a, it's an amazing thing that uh, you guys are pointing out right now. And um, it's, it's a ring that actually I've never taken off since my first uh, uh, marriage. And uh, I've had it on, and it's been on, and I never took it off even through my divorces. So uh, it, it really has saved me an awful lot of pain in the long run. Because uh, people say, oh, you're married, when I'm not. And they go, yeah, I am. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's been a lot easier to walk through life. Thank you. Thank you. Tommy, as I mentioned in your intro, at the end of the miniseries, it looks like you're a gunner. And yet, in 33, there you are, and we find out you're part of that Cylon plan. How did you get informed that, dude, we want you back? Um, I, re I really did think it was done for me. I, I remember running into James Callis. Grace and I were celebrating my birthday party. This is in the middle of the miniseries, and James was like, we ran into him on Robson Street, Vancouver, and he's like, no, seriously, man, they, they love your work. You've done an excellent job. The producers are talking about bringing you back. And that was nice. It was a nice compliment, but I really didn't take it seriously. Even in my limited experience at that point, I knew that you really couldn't put much weight on anything like that. When we actually finished the miniseries, though, uh, the cast went out for dinner, and I stopped by. I wasn't actually there. I stopped by for a drink afterwards. And um, Eddie pulled me to the side. And that's when I actually started maybe taking it seriously, because he's like... You did great work, man. Seriously, <laughs> you did an awesome job. These guys are gonna bring you back, man. You're coming back. And even then, that was huge for me. Like, I mean, I got Edward James almost. One of my idols telling me that I did a great job on the show. He, this was, that was awesome. So I took that, but at the same time, I'm a very practical person. I just, I didn't, I didn't believe in it in any way. Uh, I, w I didn't get a call from his producers telling me I did an excellent job, other than what James and Eddie said. So I was, uh, I actually went on to another series after that, uh, Canadian series, Cold Squad. And that ended up getting axed. And uh, yes, five people have seen it. It's perfect. It's cool. And uh, yeah, six. Yeah, do you remember this man? Anybody who's seen it, this was one of the original leads. Yeah, I didn't get, I didn't get the chance to work with Michael. Yeah, we, there, there you go. Uh, anyway, so I, I uh, that show ended up getting axed. So I went down to LA like all actors do, and I went down for pilot season, and I was looking for a job. And um, I had three of the worst auditions of my entire life and when that happens to an actor by the third one you're convinced that that's it. like I was like I'm not an actor this is a joke what am I doing I can't fool people anymore this is horrible I'm never gonna work this is done it's over I get home I get a call on my answer machine saying uh, from the executive producer of Cold Squad saying sorry buddy show's been axed I'm like oh god because you know in the back of my mind I was like I still have Cold Squad so I had about a week of uh, depression and then Ron Moore called me up I said, look, we've got this idea for a storyline on the planet where he was still alive and he was running around Caprica. I'm like, where do I stand? <laughs> Come on, boy, baby. Come on. Over here? 
This attack is on Hilo. One million dollars for your service. Cash. Small bills. Undetectable. Right here. Is that Paul? <laughs> I think it might be. What do you think? I don't understand the code, Paul. But what, you didn't get that? I can't remember. Well, it took 30 minutes to brief you on the secret mission. Oh, yeah. Okay, man. Is it going to blow up or anything? Open it up. Open it up, man. He got it. One million dollars in very small bills. <laughs> Teeny tiny. Fantastic. Thanks, buddy. I got to tell you, man, you are the best. This, this, uh, I, uh, this is my first uh, con in uh, the United States of America in my entire life. Aaron has always said it, and, and so has all the guys that have been coming for the last three to four years. Aaron has been the most dedicated in saying thank you to all of you for being the kind of people that you have been with us. You guys have been fantastic. And uh, he always said, you should go, you know, and of course, Michael Hogan and myself are saying, it's okay, man, thanks. You know? Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, always thinking, you know, gosh, you know, that's not really what we got into this for, and then do the whole thing, and, you know, I, thank you very much, but no, thank you. And then, this is our first one, Michael Hogan's in my first one, and we got to thank you so much for making this the most memorable time I've ever spent in public in my life. Thank you.